December 16th, 1811, 2 15 a.m. The Mississippi River should have been flowing south, carrying timber and flatboats toward New Orleans. Instead, it reversed. Waterfalls formed where none had existed. Islands vanished. The riverbed itself heaved upward, creating rapids in water that had been calm hours before. The ground did not just shake, it liquefied. Across two million square miles, from the Gulf Coast to Canada, the earth rolled in waves like an ocean. Church bells rang in Boston without anyone touching them. In Washington, D.C., chandeliers swayed in the Capitol building. This was not California. This was not the Pacific Ring of Fire. This was the stable center of the North American continent, a thousand miles from the nearest plate boundary. And it was experiencing the most powerful earthquake sequence in recorded American history. The ancient geological wound beneath the Mississippi Valley had torn itself open. Today, that same wound remains active beneath Memphis, St. Louis, and dozens of other cities. The conditions that created the New Madrid megaquake have not changed. Only the stakes have. The New Madrid seismic zone should not exist. Everything we understand about earthquakes says they happen at plate boundaries, where continental masses grind against each other. The San Andreas Fault makes sense. It sits at the border between the Pacific and North American plates. Two massive slabs of crust locked in slow motion collision. But New Madrid sits in the middle of the North American plate, hundreds of miles from any boundary. It is an intraplate fault, a category that defies the basic rules of tectonics. The explanation lies 600 million years in the past. North America tried to split apart. Deep beneath what is now the Mississippi River Valley, the continent began to rift, pulling itself in two. Magma pushed upward. The crust thinned and cracked. For millions of years, the tear grew wider. Then it stopped. The rift failed. The continent did not split, but the scar remained. That ancient wound created a zone of deep crustal weakness extending from Arkansas through Missouri, Tennessee, Kentucky, and into Illinois. The rock here is fundamentally different from the surrounding continent. It is fractured, weakened, and laced with faults that reach down into the mantle, and it is still moving. Between December 1811 and February 1812, the New Madrid seismic zone produced three separate earthquakes, each estimated above magnitude 7.0. Some researchers believe the largest reached magnitude 7.7, .7, powerful enough to be felt across the entire eastern United States. The first struck at 2.15 in the morning on December 16th. The second hit at dawn on January 23rd. The third, the most powerful, came at 3.45 in the morning on February 7th. Each quake triggered massive ground failures. Eyewitness accounts describe sand blows, geysers of liquefied sediment shooting into the air. Forests sank into the earth. Entire sections of riverbank collapsed into the Mississippi. Near what is now the Tennessee-Kentucky border, the ground dropped so dramatically it created Real Foot Lake, a body of water that had not existed before the earthquakes. The landscape permanently changed. Surveyors who returned to the region after the quakes could not locate their previous markers. Property lines had shifted. The elevation had changed by several feet in some areas. But the real mystery is not what happened in 1811. It is why it is still happening. Modern seismic monitoring shows the New Madrid seismic zone produces roughly 200 measurable earthquakes per year. Most are too small to feel, but they prove the fault system remains active still releasing stress that should not exist this far from a plate boundary. The soft sediments of the Mississippi River Valley amplify seismic waves. When an earthquake strikes here, the shaking spreads farther and lasts longer than it would in California. The same magnitude quake that affects a 60-mile radius in Los Angeles affects a 600-mile radius in Memphis. That is the geological reality. An ancient failed rift, a deep, crustal weakness, and sediments that turn moderate shaking into catastrophic ground failure. The fault that should not exist is still very much alive. Memphis sits directly on top of the new Madrid seismic zone. 
650,000 people live in a city built without meaningful seismic building codes. The downtown core rises from the same soft river sediments that liquefied in 1811. High-rise buildings, hospitals, schools, all constructed on ground that turns to quicksand when the shaking starts. Walk through Memphis and you will see the vulnerability everywhere. Unreinforced masonry buildings line the historic districts. Brick facades held together with mortar, no steel reinforcement, no seismic retrofitting. These structures were built to withstand wind and gravity, not lateral forces, not the kind of shaking that collapsed similar buildings across the region two centuries ago. The same pattern repeats in St. Louis, a metropolitan area of 2.8 million people built on the assumption that major earthquakes do not happen in the Midwest. The Gateway Arch was engineered for wind loads and temperature stress. The question of seismic resilience came later, almost as an afterthought. Compare this to California. After decades of destructive quakes, the state adopted strict building codes. Structures must flex without collapsing. Unreinforced masonry was gradually phased out or retrofitted. Hospitals and emergency facilities were built to remain operational after major shaking. The Midwest has no equivalent standards. Building codes in Memphis and St. Louis reflect the historical assumption of stability. Light seismic provisions exist now, but they are recent additions. They do not apply to older structures, and they are based on underestimated ground motion predictions. Geologists have mapped liquefaction zones throughout the region. These are areas where saturated sediments will lose all structural integrity during strong shaking. The maps show schools sitting in high-risk zones, residential neighborhoods built on fill dirt and river deposits, critical infrastructure placed directly over fault traces. The bridges present their own crisis. Seven major bridges cross the Mississippi River in the New Madrid region. These structures carry Interstate 40, Interstate 55, and other critical transportation corridors. They were designed decades ago, before modern understanding of the seismic threat. A single bridge failure would sever the eastern and western United States. Beneath the cities, another network runs even more vulnerable. Oil and gas pipelines crisscross the region, carrying fuel from Gulf Coast refineries to northern markets. These pipelines were not built with seismic joints or flexible couplings. They are rigid steel tubes buried in ground that will shift violently during the next major quake. The population has grown exponentially since 1811. When the great quakes struck, the region was frontier territory. Small settlements, log cabins, sparse population. The death toll was minimal because almost no one lived there. Today, the same area contains major metropolitan regions. Millions of people live in structures that will not survive what happened before. The vulnerability is not theoretical. It is mapped, quantified, and largely ignored. The contrast is stark. California learned through disaster. The 1906 San Francisco earthquake. The 1989 Loma Prieta quake. The 1994 Northridge event. Each tragedy drove improvements in building codes and emergency preparedness. The Midwest has not had that forcing function. The last major New Madrid quake happened before building codes existed, before modern cities, before anyone understood what liquefaction meant, or how ground motion amplifies in soft sediments. That gap in experience has created a gap in preparedness, and the gap keeps widening as more people move into the region, building more structures on the same unstable ground. The Mississippi River is not just a waterway. It is the central artery of American commerce. 60% of the nation's grain exports move down this corridor. Chemical plants line the banks. Refineries process crude oil. Barges carry coal, steel, fertilizer, and manufactured goods between the Gulf Coast and the industrial Midwest. A major New Madrid earthquake does not just damage the region, it severs the country. When bridges collapse, Interstate 40 and Interstate 55 are cut. These are not local roads. They are transcontinental highways 
carrying freight between the eastern seaboard and the west coast. Trucks that would normally cross the Mississippi in minutes faced detours of hundreds of miles. Perishable goods spoil. Supply chains that operate on just-in-time delivery grind to a halt. The river itself becomes impassable. Liquefaction along the banks triggers massive landslides. Navigation channels fill with debris. Ports that handle millions of tons of cargo annually shut down indefinitely. The economic impact spreads outward from the fault zone like the seismic waves themselves. Then there is the energy infrastructure. Major natural gas pipelines cross the New Madrid region, feeding cities from Chicago to Atlanta. When these lines rupture, millions lose heating in winter. Power plants that depend on natural gas go offline. The electrical grid, already stressed, begins cascading failures. Oil pipelines present an even more immediate danger. Ruptures mean fires and environmental contamination. A sudden shortage of refined products would affect the eastern United States. Gas stations run dry. Diesel supplies for trucks and farm equipment disappear. FEMA has run the scenarios. Their estimates suggest a repeat of the 1811 earthquakes would cause casualties exceeding any natural disaster in American history. Not because the shaking would be stronger than other major quakes, but because the region is so unresorted. Buildings collapse that would survive in California. Bridges fail that would flex on the West Coast. Infrastructure designed for stability encounters forces it was never built to withstand. The insurance industry has not priced this risk correctly. Earthquake insurance in the Midwest is rare. Most policies exclude seismic damage. When the disaster strikes, property owners discover they are uninsured. Banks hold mortgages on destroyed buildings. The financial cascade matches the physical one. Insurance shortfalls could turn a natural disaster into a national economic crisis. Scientists debate the recurrence interval. Some studies suggest major new Madrid quakes happen every 500 years. Others argue for 200-year cycles. The last major event was 213 years ago. The math is uncomfortable. Modern seismic monitoring provides some clarity. The fault zone produces constant micro-earthquake activity. Stress continues building in the deep crust. The question is not whether another major quake will occur. It is when and what happens when it does. The geological evidence is clear. The New Madrid seismic zone will produce another major earthquake. The ancient rift beneath the Mississippi Valley remains active, still releasing stress that should not exist in a continental interior. Modern cities sit on the same unstable ground that liquefied in 1811, but now millions of lives depend on infrastructure built without out seismic standards. This is a national threat that demands attention. Subscribe for more investigations into the hidden threats beneath America's surface.